when i define the class under the scope called private so i will be accessing or i will be using or that class is visible in the class which contains it in the same class i can see that constructor is a special method that we have to initialize the value of the variable whenever the object is created so when it comes to more than one level i will call it as a multi level inheritance hello everyone i welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on inheritance and polymorphism so guys you will be thinking what exactly that we have in this session it's time for all of us to chat what exactly we have so guys i will be discussing some of the things which is very very important in this chapter that's going to be the visibility control along with that i will also discuss accessibility controls multi level inheritance overriding methods and abstract classes this is going to be the very very interesting topic that we have so let's understand how exactly visibility control is happening for all of us so before i start the concept of class visibility so guys it's very very important that we need to understand what is visibility so guys imagine this is a class so where exactly i can access it and where i cannot access it where this class is visible and where i cannot see this class or i can use this class is what i will be defining with the concept called visibility so i can define the visibility concept by five keywords the first one that i have here is private what exactly that private is all about when i define the class under the scope called private so i will be accessing or i will be using or that class is visible in the class which contains it in the same class i can see that but when it comes to the derived class i will not be able to see that and remember i will not be able to access it in the containing program or anywhere the only thing that you need to understand whenever i declare that class is a private so guys only within the class i can access it anywhere else i cannot access it that is the most important thing that you need to remember in the same way i have protected when i define any class as a protected so you need to understand i will be able to access it with the containing class and the derived class so only in two places i will be able to see that or it is visible so rest in all the places i will not be able to access or it is not visible is what you need to remember and when it comes to the internal so please remember when it comes to the internal so guys i will be able to access it in the containing class as well as in the derived class and also in the containing program in the three things i will be able to access it when i define it as a internal as its visibility so that's what you need to remember but guys it is not oh sir protected how many times you have protected sir so is it protected no it is protected internal so what happens with this protected internal so same thing with the internal will happen with the protected internal what you need to remember so find the last one is public as the name itself says public so guys you have got the complete visibility you can access it wherever you want there is no restriction for you if you are defining that class or the program as a public so you don't have any restriction for the visibility you can access it anywhere so that's what you need to remember when it comes to the public so that's what uh we need to understand with respect to the visibility of a class all right moving forward to the next one accessibility constraint when it comes to the accessibility constraint you need to remember a very very important thing guys let me take up an example to explain this concept so here i'm making this class okay so let's understand this snippet what i have here so what is this this is a keyword class and the name of the class is a so fine i have the class so this is the complete class so within this class i have one more class so that is class b what is the visibility that you have defined that is private so class b is private now so class b is private in the sense whatever you have so within the class so you should be able to access only within the class all right that's what you need to remember so fine within this class i have defined a variable of type int okay but what is the visibility of that public so public in the sense you told sir anywhere you can access remember so though i have defined the class in the private so whatever i have defined inside the class remember this x is in the public but still forcefully since i have private here everything will be converted into into private that's what you need to remember 
whatever I have inside this class, which is in public, that is forcefully acting as a private, you will not be able to access outside the class. Why? What is the reason? Because you have defined this class under the scope of private. So that is the reason whatever you have inside the class, though it is in the public, so you will not be able to access it outside the class. Forcefully, we are converting all the things into private since we have made this class as a private. So this is what I will call it as a accessibility constraint. So fine, moving forward to the next one that we have subclass constructor. So why do we have constructor? Basically, that is the first topic that you need to remember. Constructor is a special method that we have to initialize the value of the variable whenever the object is created. So fine, why do we need this constructor? Remember one thing, guys, we human beings, we always tend to forget things, correct? So we have declared the variable, but we have forgotten to initialize the values for the variable. But how do I solve this problem? Human tendency is to make the mistakes and to forget the things. For that reason, we have a concept called constructor. As soon as the object is created, the value of the variable will get initialized. So who is doing that? A special method called constructor is doing that. Now, you all know what is constructor, which initializes the value for the variable as soon as the object is created. But I need to create the subconstructor. How do I create the subconstructor? So where do I create the subconstructor? What is the syntax that I need to remember for the subconstructor? I have a base class. In the base class, I have the constructor. And I have a derived class. In that derived class, if I have a constructor, I will call that as a subconstructor. How do I create that? What is the syntax? Is what we need to understand here. So fine. Guys, listen to me carefully. So I have a constructor called bedroom. What is the first thing that I need to remember with respect to the constructor? The name of the constructor and the class name should be same. And there will be no return type for the constructor is what you need to remember. So fine. Here, what should be the class name? Obviously, bedroom is the class name. So here, let me just explain the syntax for the subconstructor. And later on, I'll take up a, a program in the next slide and I'll explain. So guys, so here I have the bedroom as a constructor and I have three parameters. What type of constructor is this? Parameterized constructor. Okay, so fine. For this, okay, observe here, I have a colon and then I'm using a keyword called base and I'm having two parameters. What is this? What is the meaning of it? So for this constructor, for the value of x and y, I'm receiving it from the base class only for the z i need to get the value for this constructor for the rest two variables for the rest two parameters what i have x and y which i am receiving it from the base class is what you need to remember so this constructor is what i will call it as a subconstructor so fine so guys let's understand with the program what we have observe here so what is the name of the class that i have so i have the class as room room is the base class so fine so inside this class i have declared the variable of type int that is length clear so fine i have one more variable that is breadth of type int so fine then observe here public int room what is this room again i have told you already the name of the method and the class name is same then you should treat that as a constructor so fine this is a constructor. So this constructor is for a base class. So fine, that's what you need to remember. How many parameters you have? You have two parameters. So x is equal to, all right? So what about the value that I have with respect to the x, I am assigning it to the length, and the value that I have with the y, I'm assigning it to the breadth. So fine, that's what I'm doing it here. Pretty well. And then after that, uh, I have one more function or the method that I have. What is the name of the method? Area. So guys, how do I calculate the area? What is the formula? Length into breadth. So fine, it will return. And I'll close the class. There is no big deal in that. You just need to observe this part. So base constructor. So fine, I'm done with this first class. Observe the second one. Okay, subclass derived class. So I have the keyword class and I have bedroom. Okay, what is the name of the class? Bedroom. And then I'm inheriting the base class that is room. Clear? Observe this. This is very, very important. I'm having the inheritance here. So fine. After that, I have declared only one variable that is height. I have not defined the length and breadth in this class. That is what you need to observe here. So fine. But when it comes to the constructor, observe here. 
bedroom what is the bedroom bedroom in the sense the name of the class here okay so if i have any method name as same name as a class name i will call this as a constructor so constructor for this class which class for this class that's what you need to remember so fine observe here i have three parameters but i have declared only one height but i have three parameters x y and z so i have declared only z but i have x and y so from where shall i take the values for x and y so guys from here how do i take so i will declare like this colon base x y x comma y so the value for this x and y will i will get it from the base class constructor so that's how i will be creating the subclass constructor that's what you need to remember and then the z value i will just assign it to height so remember i have initialized the value for height uh, sorry length and breadth here but when it comes to height i will assign it here i'm not assigning it for length and breadth here because which i have already assigned it i'm using the same thing from the base constructor that's what you need to remember this is how the base constructor and the sub constructor is defined and then finally i will be initializing and i'll be calling the values observe what happens after this i'll be calculating the volume how do i calculate the volume length into breadth into height so this value will be returned so observe what happens so guys this is the main uh, method that we have so i'm creating the object for the bedroom so room 1 is the object which i'm trying to create and i'm passing three values all right then after that so i'm calculating the area and also i'm calculating the volume i'm just printing the area and volume that's it so there is no big thing in this part but very very important you need to understand this concept constructor and the base constructor and especially this part is very very important which you should never forget the value what i have here i can just use it here so you don't have to worry you don't have to declare it or you don't have to initialize it again and again is what you need to remember at this point of time moving forward to the next one multi level inheritance so guys in the previous example i had one base class and one derived class but in this i have one base class and two derived class so for this this is the base class and when it comes to b b is the derived class and for this b a is the base class okay that's what you need to remember but when it comes to c c is the derived class for the c so b and a is the base class so when it comes to more than one level i will call it as a multi level inheritance this is very very important that you need to understand with respect to the multi level inheritance when you have more than one level of inheritance we call that as a multi level inheritance moving forward to the next one and we have an example here this is how we define the multi level inheritance observe here this is what i will call it as a base class okay and then i have class a so class a is getting inherited from which class a observe here class b is getting inherited from class a all right then after that so class b observe here class b is the base class here but what is the class here class c is getting inherited from the class b that's what you need to remember when it comes to the multi level inheritance moving forward to the next topic that we have hierarchical inheritance when it comes to the hierarchical inheritance i have already told you guys so you will have one base class and multiple derived class or a sub class such type of inheritance is what i will call it as a hierarchical inheritance is what you need to remember even same thing accounts is a base class and savings fixed deposit current is a sub class all right so same way same thing happens with the fixed deposit also that's what you need to remember when it comes to the concept of hierarchical inheritance with this i've come to an end of this session so i'll be discussing how exactly overriding method abstract and sealed i will be discussing that in the next class till then take care bye bye happy learning